Hello, my beautiful people. It's your girl, Yokiris, and I'm back with another seed to drop in your spirit. Listen, y'all, make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. If you guys love this video and love my videos in general, subscribe, and you'll definitely, definitely get these more often. Um, before we get started, I wanted to share that September 9th, New York City, ladies, it's going down. My very first gala event, Red Carpet Edition. I said red carpet, so make sure y'all come in there stunting okay there's limited tickets available so once we sell out i promise you there will be no room to make for anyone so get your tickets now go to www.raisespark.com and also y'all make sure you guys grab my ebook slash also uh physical workbook it's called the light within okay if you're someone who is um on a self-discovery journey um self-identity and just trying to figure out who you are, your purpose, and just understanding you better. This workbook is a great starting point for you. So make sure you grab your copy today by visiting my website. Again, www.raiseyourspark.com. Now, a little story time. Let's get into what's on my heart to share. So I went to New York City um, for the weekend. And on Friday... Um, my flight was for, I believe it was 6.30, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to make sure I put the proof somewhere in here so y'all can see that my flight was at 6, no, my flight was at 6.50. Okay, there it goes. 6.50 a.m. Friday morning, okay? Y'all already know that the gate closes 15 minutes before departure. If you don't make it to the gate before the gate is closed, y'all already know they don't play at the airport. Everybody has to be on time. Everyone has to be in a schedule. They don't care how bad you need to get on that flight. If you are 15 minutes late, that door is closing and you're not boarding your flight, okay? Listen, y'all, I, Thursday night, went to bed at like around 2 a.m. I said, all right, cool. My flight is at 6.50. I have to be up by 4.30. Y'all, I went to sleep. I went to sleep. And my alarm went off at 4.30 and I was like, oh, I got a couple more minutes. Let me just rest. Like, it's like I knew I had to get up, but my body just wasn't with it, you know? And so I was like, all right, let me get back up at 5.30. I mean, at 5. Child, I wake up and it was 5.45. Mind you, mind you, the airport is 30 minutes away from my house. So now I'm like, yo... It is 5.40, 5.45. I have to be at the airport. I had to be at the airport before 6 so that I can board before 6.35. Yo, why did I get up at 5.45? I quickly showered. Thank God I was packed because usually I literally pack the morning of my flight a couple hours before my flight every time. So thank God. Sometimes I even wake up to pack. Literally, a mess. Thank God I was already packed. So I literally took a quick shower. I was like, oh my God, if I drive to the airport, I'm going to be late because I have to park. I have to do this. It's going to be a lot. Let me just Uber. Y'all, I order an Uber. The Uber says I'm going to make it to the airport by 6.30. Flight leaves at 6.50. Doors close at 6.35. I'm like, Lord, please let me make this fight. Like, honestly, I'm to the point where I'm like, I know I'm going to miss this flight and I really don't want to. So it was my friend, Edgar Berlanger's big event. He's a fighter. Thank God he won the fight. We already knew the victory was already won. But I just felt it in my spirit that I had to be with him before his fight so that I can pray with him. Like, the spirit was not allowing me to sit well with just staying in Houston while he was out there fighting. Mind you, I've never really went to any of his fights. I would typically watch it online, like on the TV. So this specific fight, you know, he hasn't fought in a while. This is a big deal. He's with a new company. It was just a lot of things happening. And I'm just like, my spirit is telling me I have to be with him. And so I'm like, Lord, I'm getting to this airport at 630. If it is in your will for me to be there, have your way. Because I know for a fact when I get to the airport at 6.30, I have clear, but I still have to go through TSA. Then I have to walk to the gate. That alone is going to take me about 20 minutes. So, Lord, 
have your way. Y'all, I get to the airport, Delta. This is nothing new, I'm always late, but I've never been this late. Like I always make it before the, the door closes, like at minimum. But to get there, like knowing that this door is gonna be closed and I'm just gonna pray for, 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 for a miracle was insane. I get to the airport, I quickly run, 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 run. I go through clear. I'm not, I, I, I skipped the whole line of TSA, but now I still have to wait online to put myself through the machine. I see there's like about six people ahead of me. I'm like, hey y'all, my flight leaves in literally like five minutes and I have to make it. So please let me skip you guys. They were like, okay, no problem. I went through. Y'all, I'm running to the gate, running to the gate, running to the gate. It is already like 6.35. Gate is closed, but I'm still like, man, I'm gonna just see what's going on. Like, you know, I'm running, 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 walking, walking fast. Like in Houston, the airport is huge. So I'm just like, oh my God, Lord, I gotta make it, I gotta make it. It was Friday and I landed in New York at 1130 but his weigh-in was at one o'clock. So I'm like, I have to make it to his weigh-in. Like I have to go touch and agree with him. I have to pray for him. And so fast forward, y'all, I get to the gate. It's 640. Remember the gate closes at 635. It's 640. And by the grace of God, I walked right through. Like they didn't even, honestly, the people that were working the gate, didn't pay me any mind. Like I literally took my phone, scanned my boarding pass and went right in. I was the last person to board that flight at 6.40. Mind you, the flight was supposed to leave at 6.55 and they pushed it um, um, back five minutes. They were like, oh, we're gonna leave five minutes early because everyone already boarded. So listen to this again, door closes at 6.35. I make it to the gate at 6.40. So technically, I was not supposed to be allowed on that flight. And not only that, but the flight was set to leave five minutes earlier than initial, you know, than it was supposed to be, than the initial time, the original time. So I'm like, Lord, what in the world? And when I sat down, when I reached my seat, you know, I put everything up, whatever, whatever. I made it to my seat and I sat down and I was like, Lord, what was that about? And he spoke to me and he said, listen, wherever I need you to be, you will be because nothing can come between where I called you to be. Y'all listen, man, this might be confirmation for someone. Listen, listen, cause that was like so insane to me the way that it happened. Like it was like nothing and nobody but God. And a lot of times we try to seek and find God and the, the miraculous huge things. And it, it's in the, the things that we overlook that he's trying to tell us something. And in that moment, God spoke to me and said, my baby, wherever I need you to be, nothing can come between that. Where the assignment and where you are assigned to be it will come to pass. Listen, I took notes, but I don't got my notes in front of me. But listen, I, 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 I'm two days late with this message. I, I was going recorded on the, on the plane, but I didn't have time. I had other things to focus on. But understand something, this is confirmation for someone, that when God is calling you to a place, God will override every and anything to ensure that you are on your way to your assignment. Wherever he called you to be, can no man come between that? Because God will override the authority that's in place, the rules and regulations that are in place, the laws and the, and the standards that are in place. He will override him so that the fulfillment of his calling and his destiny over your life is saw through completely in other words god is saying like you listen i am the alpha and the omega i am above all things all i i run this 
So I don't care who's in position, who's in authority, what laws, rules, and regulations are set in place. I don't care what's in black and white. When I call you to do a thing, when I have an assignment over your life, can't no man, can't no thing come between what it is that I called and have for you to do. And that excited me because I'm like, wow, I serve a, I serve a God. My father, he runs this whole show. He is the king of kings, the lord of lords. He can override any prince, anything, any, any law, any regulation, any standard to fulfill the calling that he has over your life. And that excites me and it should excite you to know and understand that what God has for you, it's for you. That when God has you on an assignment, on a calling, on a purpose, he will make sure that everything works out together for the good of what he has inside of you that he needs to birth. And that alone, it, again, it excited me and it blew my mind because I was like, wow, I serve a God I serve a God that no matter what, I will be where he needs me to be. No matter what, I will go through like, I will go through like invisible woman. And, and so that again is confirmation for someone. So stop worrying about you not being on time. Stop worrying about you, 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 you arriving too late. There's no such thing as getting anywhere too late when it's where God called you to be. It's funny because that same Sunday, Pastor Keon, my pastor in Texas, preached about timing. That a lot of us measure our time based on our age and based on, you know, literally a clock. But God bases time in seasons. He doesn't look at the clock. He doesn't look at the age. But when things happen, they happen when they're supposed to happen, not when we want them to happen. And so these were the notes that I took on my cell phone. I can see them on my laptop. And as you guys can see, the date on here is June. Where is it at? Where is it at? Hold on. I want y'all to see the date, y'all, because I don't want y'all to think I'm kidding. Oh, hold up. Let me up. Let me go up. Let me go up. It says it right there. Uh, oh, it's very tiny. Um, June 23rd. Y'all see that? June 23rd at 7.57 a.m. Okay, that was Friday. Where you are meant to be, you will be. Where God wants you, he will make sure you get there. Where God calls you, you will be. No matter the rules, no the regulations, no matter what is set in place, God will override every rule, every tradition, every standard, Everyone in authority for you because he is above all things. And guess what? Guess what's the beauty of all this? Guess what the point of this message is? Is that at the end of the day, God has the final say. God has the final say. So can't no man stop what God has in store for you. Not even you can stop it. He said to me, I'll make the usual I'll make the unusual usual. I will make the uncommon common for you because you are my chosen vessel. Let me go back to that real quick. When you are chosen and handpicked by God and he has a set assignment on you, understand that your circumstances does not define the outcome of or, or, or the pathway of where God is taking you and leading you or, or, or it's not going to, you know, it might reroute you, redirect you, but you'll always still end up where he called you to be. Because again, you are a chosen vessel. And so he says, I will make the unusual usual, not just usual U S U A L. U-S-U-A-L, but usual, Y-O-U, usual, usual. He will make the uncommon things common. It's uncommon for a person to arrive to their gate 10 minutes late and make it on the plane. 
it's unusual that the people working the gates are not going to tell you, uh-uh, you're late. You have to rebook another flight because you you missed this one. Our gate's already done. We're closed. We're ready. We're ready to ship off. That's unusual. But again, when you are handpicked, when you are chosen, and most importantly, when you are on a on assignment, I had no business being in New York this weekend. I wanted to go to his fight. I had plans on it, but I had other things to prioritize like my business but something kept tugging at me and last minute thursday i said all right i gotta go book the flight and i had to be there so again because i was on assignment god made a way and overrided every rule and every regulation to ensure that i that he he made sure that i saw through what he called me to do on this trip and y'all when i made it on the i i, I went I, I made it to to i made it to edgar's way in um i made it there a little bit late because of traffic but i made it there i was able to see him before his fight i made it there friday he fought saturday and friday we went into deep prayer oh my goodness the presence the holy spirit was in that hotel room y'all it was the most one of the the most beautiful encounters that i had and he even called me today and said, sis, that was an encounter. Because listen, ladies, really quickly before I go, we need to start getting to a place where we are praying for our men, but also praying with our men. Whether it's a brother, a cousin, a friend, a boyfriend, a husband, they need us. A lot of men are silent because they don't know how or what to scream or how to scream or what to say or how to say it. And so God put me in assignment to be there. He used me as a vessel to bring forth and open up a prayer where he can release. And it was one of the most beautiful experiences. Seeing a man just open up his heart to God. And right there after that prayer, after we worship, after we fellowshiped, I said, all right, God. My assignment is complete. And I promise y'all I had the most beautiful weekend. I was able to spend time with my family, my dad, my brother. I was able to just be around love. And y'all, no matter what you desire in life, no matter what kind of friendships, no matter what kind of relationship, just always please be where the love is. There's nothing like being surrounded by love. It's cool to want the nicest things in life, the finer things in life. To exp Those are all amazing things to do and to, to, to desire. But love has no price. Love is, is freedom. Love allows you to just be you. Love is, is, is light, is beautiful, is soft, is gentle, is peace, is, is joy. Love is a beautiful thing. And so if you're ever able to experience that, embrace those moments and don't take them for granted. I hope this message helped y'all. I don't feel like it came out the way I felt it the moment it happened. But again, I just wasn't led to speak on it then because when I boarded my flight and he gave me this, I literally went into praise and worship for an hour on my flight. Literally, I was on the flight boo-hooing in the spirit like, Speaking in my heavenly language for an entire hour. My flight was three hours long. The whole first hour, I was just worshiping the entire time. I know my, my the fellow next to me, I'm like, man, if he ain't a man of God, he probably wondering what in the world. But I felt safe because I knew the Holy Spirit was there with me. And I was able to just worship and just be grateful and just honor him. Because he just told me in that moment, yo, Kairos, you are my chosen vessel. You are my chosen vessel. And I will make the unusual usual. 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 I will make the uncommon common because I chose you. You are one of my chosen ones. And I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will always make sure that the plans and the things that I have set for you 
I will provide every resource you need to fulfill the assignment. I will make sure to open and not just open, but I will make sure to open doors and close doors in order for you to fulfill the assignment that I have for you. So count it all joy, no matter what you're going through, count it all joy. And also understand that we have to keep our spiritual eyes open and our ears open to hear from God in all things. Stop looking for him in the big theatric and the the, the, the miraculous, like, you know, firework things and experiences, right? Because that's what we tend to look for him in. Just be still and see him in all things because he's there speaking to you every day, whether it's a big thing or a little thing. Again, me getting on that flight, I said, oh, no, this is God. Lord, what are you trying to tell me? And because I asked and then I sat still to wait for a response, he gave it to me. And it was this message. So I love y'all. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. And remember, remember, where God needs you, he will make sure you, you get there. All right? You will get there. Love you and have a blessed day.